Hello everybody, today we're going to be going over how to properly fill out a ballot so we make sure that your vote gets counted because sometimes these can be a little bit confusing and we just wanted to go over a couple things that might be tricky. So we're starting off here with a New York ballot. As you can see, uh, this is the one from the 2016 general presidential election. And one thing that might be confusing about this is you see that some of the candidates are listed more than once under different parties. Now, if you're voting for a candidate that's listed more than once, you do not bubble it in every single time. You only bubble in once. So you would bubble in for that candidate under the party that you most identify with. Otherwise, if you vote for, if you bubble in more than one thing, your ballot is canceled and it, and it doesn't work anymore. So then when you're ready to bubble in who you're going to vote for, we'll, uh, we'll go over here and practice on the write-in section. You just bubble in like normal, like you think you would, but you have to make sure that that bubble is the only thing you draw on, on the ballot. So you can't like cross out candidates that you know you're not going to vote for. Any other marks or things like that will make your ballot invalid. So you want to make sure you don't do anything that like I just did. Now, oftentimes when we vote, we're not just voting on one position on one ballot. So like in this North Carolina ballot, this is often dealt with by kind of spacing them out into different parts. And you can see that sometimes in different positions, you could vote for more than one person. So that'll be clearly written out right below whatever position you're voting for is. And the way you do it, of course, is the same where you would just fill out the bubble either once or twice or however many people it says that you can choose. And you can see the part parties are also listed below each candidate. And that's not on all ballots, but on a lot of ballots it is. Um, so if you happen to go in without doing as much research as maybe you should have, you and you know you align with one party, you can use that to help you decide who you should vote for. You can also not choose to vote for a certain position and your ballot will still be valid. Now, sometimes you're not only voting for people, but for what we call ballot measures. Now, ballot measures are um, issues and questions that appear on ballots that the voters can decide. So there are a couple popular types of these. Uh, one is initiatives, which is a citizen initiated ballot measure. So basically you can get a measure on the ballot by getting enough signatures on a petition. There are referendums, which is also citizen initiated, but it is the purpose of it is to decide whether to repeal a law passed by legislation. And then legislation ones. So basically legislators can put questions on the ballot to see what the public opinion is like. So the last way of filling out a ballot that we're going to talk about today is the electronic version. So some states have this and they're each a little bit different, but for the most part, a poll worker is going to give you your ballot and you're going to feed it into the machine. Then on the machine is where you're going to use the touch screen to select who you would like to vote for. And after you finished voting, it's going to ask you to print out your ballot so you can look through it and double check that everything is right and you voted for the people you wanted to. And then once you've double checked, you're going to go ahead and slide it right back into the machine so it can do the final tally of your votes. And it's going to have you confirm and then it'll say that yes, you your votes have been reported. And so a lot of them will also have good instructions on the side and you can always ask a poll worker when you're at the polls. Thank you for watching, and as always, feel free to reach out if you have any questions.